mechanical thrombectomy, I started doing it in the early 90s, maybe 91, 92. It was not what we recognize it as it is today. It was very early methods to try to fragment a clot in the brain in patients with acute stroke. I remember we were participating in the clot bus trial in which we were monitoring with a transcranial Doppler recanalization and it was very frustrating to see that with uh, the TCD, the Doppler, we could see the occlusion. It was right a few centimeters in, in the brain of the patient and TPA was dripping but most of the times the recanalization will still be there. So it, will, it was very frustrating not to be able to get inside there and take, get rid of the clot. Since I have started this specialty 25 years ago, we have many times trying to reopen the vessel. So we were trying all the materials that we have on the shelves, the balloon, the lasso, different kinds of material, but it was not working at all. I remember the first time I saw a mechanical thrombectomy was during my fellowship in Houston, Texas. It was amazing uh, to see that uh, there they were doing uh, these procedures that uh, we couldn't do at that time uh, here in Barcelona. That was back in 2004. And then started in the early 2000, some dedicated material that came on the, the market. We can uh, cite the Mercy system or the, the catch from BALT, which were specifically designed to retrieve the, the clot, but they were not working uh, that much. I have to recall, it must have been somewhere uh, 2007, 2008, that we started with uh, the very first Mercy devices, uh, the first generation, which was kind of corkscrew, and the second generation with some filaments on it. That was uh, our first experience. The first thrombectomy we did with the modern technology was performed in 2009. If I'm not mistaken, it was in September 2009. In 2009, uh, we've seen uh, some nice reports. Uh, it was a small center trying to retrieve retrieving clots uh, with the solitaire. And uh, we tried it uh, just in 2009 in Montpellier, but uh, as we were a well-organized uh, stroke unit, we were able to uh, do it consecutively, uh, up to 50 consecutive cases, uh, and we have published this in Stroke uh, with some other center. The, the first experiment were published. The story of the thrombectomy is quite funny because this is really what's happening in medicine. You have a, a device which was clearly designed to treat aneurysm, which was the, the solitaire. And it has happened somewhere in the world that the physician tried to deposit a solitaire to treat an aneurysm. He got trouble. He got clotting without, within the, the, the solitaire. And he tried to reshit it. Normally, this was the advantage of the solitaire. And finally, failed to reshit the solitaire. And he had to remove everything, the whole system, the solitaire with the clot which was formed inside the solitaire. And the physician was very surprised to discover that the clot was trapped within the, ma the mesh of the, the solitaire. And this, the, the, the physician was clever enough to understand <coughs> that the solitaire was probably something which was very helpful to remove the clot. And very, very rapidly afterwards, because we are a very small community, the information widespread everywhere in the different centers and we have started during the mid-2009 uh, to use the solitaire to remove the clot and it appeared to be amazing. It was amazing. I remember this. Uh, it was like a miracle, in fact. Uh, we had the patient under general anesthesia and it was a T occlusion of the carotid and he, was a, he had a contraindication for IV lytics. And uh, just after the, the, the clot retrieval, the patient awake and he was uh, moving again half of the body. So the anesthesiologist was so surprised that he took his phone and he called us to come to see the patient. So we went to see the patient. The patient was moving again. They were so surprised. We took the phone again and we called to the we called the neurologist. The neurologist was coming uh, nearby the patient. We was doing a new we were doing a new evaluation. The patient was moving again, and it was like a miracle. We we're just uh, looking at the patient. The yes, come come to see the patient is moving again. It never happened before. It was just before and after.
the uh, thrombectomy took a huge turn towards the uh, good outcome, especially after the five studies were published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2015. Uh, and that has a, had, at the time, a huge impact because it was the first time that uh, a randomized a clinical trial showed beyond any doubt, and most of them were stopped earlier than they reached their, their point, uh, that mechanical thrombectomy had a positive good effect on the outcome of patients presenting with acute ischemic stroke. Mr. Clean, we finally demonstrated that the endovascular treatment in the proper selected patients with a large vessel occlusion within a certain time window, uh, that they have a, a, a benefit from the treatment. Trials before, like the IMS3 synthesis, uh, Mr. Rescue, they investigated effect the same, but because of not the proper patient selection, long delays, uh, and, and the first generation devices like we used before, uh, they, they could not show this benefit. Uh, and in Mr. Clean, we were lucky. We were the first one with the new uh, devices, the stent retrievers, and also with, uh, well, it it's appeared to be the good uh, patient uh, cohort. I would say there was a completely turning point a huge turning point in the history of mechanical uh, thrombectomy. We have observed something which is completely unique in medicine. During a six month period of time, we have seen five uh, randomized studies which were published in the New England Journal of Medicine, which is incredible in the life of a physician. After 2015, there was a complete change of the situation, a boom of endovascular treatments. We are still experiencing that. Uh, uh, year after year, we are increasing by 20, 30 or 40 percent our number of thrombectomies. And this is happening worldwide. So it's, uh, it's a global uh, phenomenon that is happening and th that should happen. And, and we must do any, everything we, we can to, to make it happen because we are uh, benefiting our patients with, with, with this procedure. Just to give you an idea, in 2015, we were doing in this center roughly 30 uh, thrombectomy per year, and the year after it was uh, nearly 300. So we multiplied by 10 the amount of uh, patients that would have benefited from the thrombectomy during just a one year period of time. We started to uh, try to respect the indications that were uh, within those five uh, big studies. So with the neurologists here, we were uh, rapidly trying to enlarge the indication, especially for the wake-up stroke, which was really a challenge. And then we were very happy when uh, uh, our thinking about the wake-up stroke and the extreme indication were confirmed by a Down study and a Diffuse 3 when they were published in uh, 2017. There is a massive uh, growth in uh, terms of uh, thrombectomy indication that is uh, also uh, related to, the, to the, um, the, the six RCT that went positive, but also now to the growing organization of the stroke centers and the help of uh, also the, the industry to educate the population has uh, increased the capability of the medical community to treat uh, patients. Uh, with thrombectomy devices. So there is also uh, new information uh, about the, the time window and now it's possible to treat patients up to 24 hours. Now we see that uh, even large stroke may benefit from mechanical thrombectomy. There's still some question but the more we go the more we see that uh, this treatment give benefit for the patient so the more indication there is. The Solitaire was indeed the first device that was coming on the market uh, to allow us to retrieve uh, clots from the intracranial circulation. The Solitaire was first used as a bridge device for uh, uh, coiling of aneurysms. And then uh, it was discovered that it can actually retrieve coils and subsequently retrieve clots. So it was the first time after the Mercy device the Solitaire was the first easy-to-use, user-friendly device that goes through a microcatheter, a small microcatheter, 
inside the cloud, and it was much easier to navigate than any other predecessors, specifically much easier to navigate than the Mercy device. I remember the transition between uh, the Mercy device and the Solitaire, and in fact, this was what made uh, probably uh, one of the major uh, reasons that made uh, the, these five trials to be positive. The fact that we were finally using stent rivers and not uh, first generation devices like uh, uh, Mercy. We were informed um, that there was one stent that had been used for uh, thrombectomy and I remember that at that time, we only knew about the French, you know, the Spanish group, the Spanish group uh, in Barcelona that uh, used the Solitaire for the first time. Later, I heard that uh, the German group with the Hans Henkes also in the same period uh, discovered the same uh, features of the Solitaire stand. But anyway, we heard that from um, colleagues, and immediately we went. I went together with Charles Marchwald from Amsterdam to a workshop in uh, Liège, uh, Bel Belgium. And the workshop was done by Vitor Mendes Pereira, who was at that time still in Switzerland. He's now in Canada. Uh, so we did it with this uh, solitaire. We had a solitaire already for aneurysm treatment. And I also remember that the week after this workshop, I had the first case. I did with uh, uh, the solitaire and I immediately sent a mail to uh, Vitor. Uh, yes, the first one was a success, so we will continue with it. So it really changed the practice. We changed completely from this Mercy devices to the Solitaire. We did realize using this Solitaire device that we can retrieve clots through a microcatheter, a self-expanding stent with very um, uh, no trauma to the circulation or much less trauma on the blood vessel itself or on the wall of the blood vessel. And so therefore less incidence of dissection, less incidence of rupture or perforation of the artery. So it was the first to be used. It was user friendly. Uh, the IFUs were pretty clear. It went through a microcatheter and it allowed us to reach uh, locations of class that was hard for us to reach in the past. So overall, it made a huge difference for us. What is really amazing for the Solitaire is to see that uh, this device that was not designed for this purpose of thrombectomy, still one of the most efficient devices on the market 10 years after its first design. So it's really amazing to see that uh, the, between the first design of the Solo uh, stent and the Solitaire stent uh, uh, for thrombectomy, uh, now the, the modification of the design is really little and the device is still one of the best on the market. The Solitaire brought the possibility for the first time ever to remove a clot in the brain of the patient. So before the, the it was, it's very simple, before the Solitaire we didn't have anything to remove the clot Afterwards, it was working in more than 70% of the cases. After all the clinically randomized trials using stent rivers, and there were a couple of randomized trials using uh, specifically the solitaire, and they were very, very effective, and the outcome was very good, statistically significant improvement in the outcome of patients presenting with acute ischemic stroke after having used the solitaire. What is amazing is that when we see the Mr. Clean trial, Mr. Clean trial design started before the wave of stent river and the wave of solitaire came on the market. So it's the combination between uh, the first uh, randomized control trial designed to see if intravascular treatment may improve stroke care and the technologic disruption of the stent river with the solitaire that coming all together uh, resulted into the massive change of uh, the stroke care. Solitaire was used in most of the clinical trials that were halted after the Mr. Clean uh, trial came out. Um, so the evidence was, let's say, growing. Uh, the, the results from Mr. Clean were confirmed. Uh, although in Mr. Clean also the Solitaire was used, I think in, in one third of cases and in two thirds other uh, stents were used. Um, but still the other trials using mainly or only solitaire had the same results um, and it was very good that those trials were running at the same time and that we had confirmation that it was not just a one trial uh, success but it was sure that it was let's say the truth uh, that it could be confirmed 
whatever trial after that uh, was started. The Solitaire was uh, first uh, provided to everybody and then came different competition and uh, in the competition there is always something to uh, win and what, uh, what we win from the competition is the ability for the Solitaire to be visible under the X-ray. So the evolution of the Solitaire was some year after to provide some marker all along the, the, the solitaire. For sure, we had also different sizes of the, the solitaire for different size of the vessels. The device the, is uh, very intuitive and uh, uh, it might be some uh, technical skills, but uh, it's, uh, it's really not, not uh, very difficult once you get these skills. And uh, it's, uh, you can do it uh, again and again, uh, with, uh, and, and usually, you, usually you get uh, very good results. Like we get to recanalize our uh, large vessel occlusion up to 85% of the times, which is huge. Just like any other stem retriever, um, the, the, the solitaire uh, is actually very usable in different conditions. You can start with aspiration, you can start with a large catheter, aspirate the clod. Uh, this is actually what we do. Uh, but if the aspiration doesn't work or doesn't work quick enough, we then immediately put a solitaire. So it adapts itself very well. The good thing about, about stent trivers is that they are versatile. You can combine them with a balloon guide catheter, without a balloon guide catheter, with distal aspiration, without distal aspiration. Uh, even in some cases we can even uh, think about uh, using uh, two stent trivers at the same time. So, so it's a, a versatile product that, that uh, offers uh, good results most of the times. I think that the uh, stent itself did not change because the new technique, the Solumbra, the combination stent with distal aspiration technique uh, became popular. Um, the stents stay the same. Um, but it appeared that it worked well together with the distal aspiration uh, catheter. Nowadays you see that many physicians choose to go for aspiration first only. But on the other hand you see that in many publications the, the highest first, su first pass success rates are done with the combination stent retriever and distal aspiration. So I think that is promoted by most of the uh, well experts. When we had the solitaire, it was the gold standard. So all the thrombectomy, they were performed with a, with a solitaire or with a stent retriever. And beside that, there was a huge development for the distal aspiration. So there was always a discussion whether or not we should use distal aspiration alone or a stent retriever alone. And some of the physicians, including us in our team, we have tried both to try to remove the clot after the first passage as often as possible. So we were using in conjunction distal aspiration plus stent river to increase the probability to remove the clot after the first passage. The solitaire stent is combining nicely with all the techniques, just the balloon gaining catheter, the intermediate catheter, distal uh, also uh, thrombectomy. In fact, I would say that the, the other techniques were built around the solitaire uh, technique. In fact, it's not the solitaire that is adapting to the other technique. I mean, the other technique, they were built uh, around the solitaire. There are many ways to improve the management of the stroke. In my opinion, the first thing is to inform the population. When the patient, they, they get some hemiplegia or impossibility to speech anymore, they don't panic. Even the people around them, they say, OK, I will shake my arm and I will wait a little bit and I will recover. So we have many situations during which the patient or their family, they delay the, the call to the, to the ambulance or to the doctor. So first of all, in my opinion, we have to provide an information. Then when you get a stroke, when you have a paralysis of an anybody, you should call for help. There are many things that can be done and should be done. However, it depends a lot on the country and level of 
delivery of healthcare uh, through different regions of the world. Of course, depending on the region where you are in the world, you have to adapt the, 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 the ability of performing thrombectomy. It's easy to do it in a very densely populated area as we have here. For example, in the region of Paris, we have 12 million people living in a very small area. Can you imagine how you can manage uh, thrombectomy in uh, some very big country like in Australia when you are far away? So the, 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 the situation is completely different and it has to be adapted to the local conditions. I think uh, right now uh, discussing about if we should use a longer device or a shorter device, this will not do uh, much of an impact. What is really doing uh, the difference is how we manage patients either at the pre-hospital level. We need to make patients come earlier and faster to the ideal center where they can get treatment and also what happens immediately after they are admitted. We need to reduce our workflow times in hospitals to reduce all uh, unnecessary imaging and do right uh, only what is exclusively necessary to get the patient into the table and recanalize that occlusion. Now we see that the rate of recanalization is very important, very high. You can go up to 90%, there's no problem about that. Maybe we can improve to 90 to 92, but when we see that in the hospital phase we are losing hours and hours, that's the, that's the next step we need to solve, how to make the patient early, very early in the end suite. We just heard about the race cat study. There are more initiatives how to find out what is the best uh, logistics and secondly, how can you improve logistics in a region, in a country or in a hospital. I think there should be the focus now because there is the biggest uh, gain for, for now. Educate the uh, EMS, uh, the emergency medical services, to bring the patient to a specific center that specializes in things, uh, train uh, the personnel, both the emergency room personnel, the anesthesiologists, the neurologists, the stroke neurologists, and the interventional uh, radiologists, neuroradiologists, neurosurgeons, neurologists, to perform quickly and safely a thrombectomy. But also really keeping an eye on the cost of all of this and trying to convince uh, the third party payers and the government institutions that are in charge of the delivery of healthcare, that it is much better for them to spend money on the treatment of acute ischemic stroke than rather spend the money on dealing with disability later and loss of productivity of patients. So all of this has to play if you really want to do an impact or have an impact on the treatment of acute ischemic stroke.